I, we, I have a podcast um, with my husband on From the Kitchen Table where we discuss the number one problem facing the country that needs to be addressed in the next, you know, whoever wins the next election. Um, and it is the deep state that we cannot continue as a country and say we're a democracy when there is no equal justice. Um, when we see this kind of disparity of justice um, where Hunter Biden gets off and Donald Trump is now facing life in prison, potentially. Rachel Campos Duffy, a right wing podcast host, is very concerned about the deep state. That's what you talk about at the kitchen table, the deep state? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. Well, Holy cow. Have you welcome met, to have our you met kitchen. Rachel? We just, we, we just, yeah, exactly. Have you, do you not know me? We also discuss your recipes from your book. You <laughs> Listen, know that. We, you and I text a lot on that. <laughs> we discuss a lot of things. Okay, first, I don't know how old any of you are, but this is that conservative girl from the real world San Francisco, which I think came out in maybe the late 90s. She's been on this conservative grind for a while now. That was kind of her identity when she was on the show. So it's kind of wild to see that she did end up on Fox News. So I guess, you know, good for her. Oh man, oh man. I want to go drop by your house and just watch a little. You know what my you know what my motto is? If you're not talking to your kids about socialism, somebody is. So <laughs> where else to do it but around the Chris, Chris, the Chris kitchen table? <laughs> we talk more to our kids about social media than socialism. Well, that's enough. where a lot of the socialism is coming from. So on a recent appearance on Fox News, Campo Stuffy tells the host that she and her husband have a podcast where they discuss the number one problem facing this country, and it is the deep state. Now, even Steve Ducey seems to find this a little amusing because while I'm sure he's already familiar with her podcast, it's called The Kitchen Table. The deep state is a hell of a thing to discuss regularly at The Kitchen Table, isn't it? All right, side note, I also learned from this clip that Steve Ducey cooks. So I looked up one of his cooking segments and he made a buffalo chicken French toast sandwich, which had French toast, maple syrup, a pre-made chicken patty covered in buffalo sauce and a pickle. You've got some in the, in the uh, sure studio. Go ahead, go yes. ahead and try it. Here's what you do. You, you take a couple of pieces of uh, French toast, right? And then what you put on the French toast is you obviously put some syrup on both sides, right? Just like that. Then, okay, so that's Sorry. regular French toast so far. This is the key. You take one of those little uh, chicken patties, chicken breast patties that you get everywhere, and you put it in buffalo sauce, buffalo. right? Buffalo wing sauce. Mm -hmm. You put it like that on top of there, and then... And this is the secret. I genuinely don't know how I feel about that. Like, I'm not as mad about it as I feel like I should be, although I am reluctant to call putting a sandwich together cooking. What do you think? Put it in the comments. Anyway, this clip did get me thinking more about the deep state. More specifically, what even is it? The dictionary definition is, quote, a body of people, typically influential members of government agencies or the military, believed to be involved in the secret manipulation or control of government policy. So just right there, you've got secret manipulation and you've got agencies and entities that are believed to be involved. Those words secret and belief are key because literally by definition, you can't prove the existence or the influence of the alleged deep state. It will always be something nebulous and nefarious and elusive. Furthermore, we have to think more specifically about those, quote, influential members of government agencies or the military, the people that allegedly comprise this deep state. Well, influential members of government could just be Congress people, cabinet members, or court justices. Influential members of the military could just be generals or admirals. There's nothing inherently secretive about either of those groups of people. Many of them were elected into office office. This sharing of power is also by design. The president, while he's often billed as the most powerful man in the world, is in many ways a figurehead. A president is not powerful on his own. He's powerful because he's backed and supported by the authority of the presidential institution that we collectively acknowledge and respect, as well as a tight inner circle of supporting staff and government officials. No, we don't know every detail of every government official's operations. That would be impossible to know fully, but we at least know who these people are. But speaking of operational details, this also pertains to what I'm going to call the myth of transparency. I will totally obliterate the deep state. I will fire. A 
lot of Trump supporters will cite Trump's transparency as one of the reasons why they like him. He says what he's thinking all the time, every time, and maybe he does. That doesn't mean that there isn't a whole lot that he isn't saying. And that doesn't mean that everything he thinks is true. Maybe he actually believes the lies that he tells. But his supporters perceive him to be outside of the deep state. They've made him, a billionaire legacy businessman, into an outsider. And the deep state doesn't like outsiders. Outsiders upset the balance. Outsiders are disruptors. And while I think we can all appreciate an actually good disruptor now and again, it's a little short-sighted to think that Donald Trump is one of them. Or rather, I should say, it's short-sighted to think that Donald Trump is disrupting the government for the sake of everyday American people and not for his own personal benefit. And I call transparency a myth because it's unreasonable to expect that any government official will tell you 100% of the truth 100% of the time. I'm not necessarily saying they're lying about the things that they do tell you. I'm saying there's no way they could possibly be giving you the full story almost ever. Even your boss isn't being fully transparent with you because sometimes the fewer people are in on something, the better it is. You know, you can have too many cooks in the kitchen, too many opinions, too many conflicting motivations, too many hurt feelings, too many reputations at stake, etc. There are a lot of valid reasons to withhold information if you are a person in a leadership position. There are also a lot of invalid reasons to do so, but I'm not talking about those right now. So having said all of that, there are tons of people and organizations that we, the American people, should be skeptical of. Government agencies like the FBI, the CIA, the IRS, the Fed, the Pentagon, we should be paying attention to their activities as much as we're able to do so. History tells us that they've all engaged in behavior that was less than ethical, both here at home and abroad. That's not conspiracy. Corporations aren't technically government organizations, but they may as well be. We need to be paying attention to them. The church, same deal. And it goes without saying that we should be doing our best to hold our elected and even our unelected officials accountable as best we can. But framing matters. We can speak intelligently about the things that we would like to see changed in this country without speaking vaguely about the deep state. It's a broad and misunderstood term that is used deliberately to invoke a sense of mystery and with that, fear. You can blame any and everything on the deep state when you never feel obligated to identify a more specific culprit. Specificity requires actual research and knowledge and discernment and analysis. The way people use the deep state in conversation, you may as well replace it with you know, the Illuminati or the lizard people or the boogeyman. All right. That's it for me. If you got anything out of this, please like and subscribe to the channel and be sure to follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and threads. I'm on there now and I've actually been using it a tiny, tiny bit. Thanks.